again. Solid. That was solid. <laughs> What's up guys, Larry Chen here. Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. I am here at Speed Vegas, and we're actually out here in Las Vegas for the SEMA show. Our favorite thing to do, of course, is to shoot a lot of the cars before we even get to the show. Kind of the, the point is to tell the story and actually get these cars out on the track, on the strip, out in the desert just to show that these are not show queens that's kind of the point we love race cars and then we have one of the craziest race cars here this awesome pikes peak bmw but we got tyler here he is the builder slash owner slash driver right <laughs> yeah it's a pretty cool thing these days i feel like that's kind of a rarity especially amongst like you know uh, professional motorsport yeah so tell me a little bit about yourself where are you from what do you do so uh, my name is Tyler Pappas. I own Ty Speed Automotive. We're out of Jackson, New Jersey, which is kind of near the Jersey Shore. And uh, I'm 27 years old, and I started a BMW repair shop so that I could afford to go racing. I built myself this M2 to kind of shake things up a little bit and you know get my name out there within the industry. And uh, I think we've done a pretty good job. Talk about the dream. Like that is so awesome to me that instead of kind of begging others and begging for help and like just doing the whole traditional racing path, you kind of just paved your own way. You made your own money and with your own knowledge, you kind of built your own car. And within one year, you did Pike Speak and now you're here at SEMA show. At SEMA, yeah. I mean, last year was my first year actually at SEMA. And I saw it and I was like, wow, this is really cool. And I think growing up uh, as a kid and being part of car culture, um, it was always like that mecca show. And if you got in there, like you definitely were somebody within the industry. And it's like a real honor this year to be backing uh, Pike's Peak up with uh, having the car on display at, at SEMA and CSF's booth. It's, it's a pretty awesome deal. Shout out to Ravi from CSF for uh, hooking us up. Here's the thing. When I think about this car, I think about it. My buddy Jason, who actually helped us cover Pike's Peak this last year, he has a shot but absolutely getting pelted with snow or sleet or rain or whatever. I, just about yeah, it. <laughs> it was insane. I could not believe how bad the conditions were. Let's start from the outside and then go on the go to the inside. Yeah, so body-wise, one of the first things that we did with this car was uh, once we decided to make it a race car, which was not our original plan with it when I bought it off the showroom floor in 2016, was uh, we needed to shed some weight. These cars are heavy, 3,680 pounds stock. Damn. So uh, it's only 3,200 now, that's with me in it, which is you know definitely some weight savings. We had uh, molds made and had our hood, our doors, and our trunk all made out of composite, as well as the roof panel. So, that in total probably saved us about, I don't know, 180, 200 pounds. Uh, and that was the biggest weight savings that we probably had during the build. So that was the, the, the first thing that we did. And you can see it's really not like that crazy in terms of like appearance. I mean, obviously the library is pretty crazy, but it relatively looks like if it didn't have a wing on it and a diffuser and some other bolts on aero mods are pretty stock in too. All right, so what about the wheels? What's going on with the wheels? Yeah, so these are Apex race parts. I mean, they're like off the shelf. They're 18 by 10 and a half. Um, super lightweight and they're, uh, they're cast aluminum. They also just released like a forge line, which we're gonna be running uh, for 2020. Um, but uh, I love these things, man. I'm like, we've been hitting curbs. We've gotten hit before on track. You see there's some damage on the right rear. Um, and you know, we have yet to have a wheel failure. So you gotta trust your wheels. Uh, that's such an important thing. And same thing with the tires. I mean, if you're having tire and wheel failures, uh, it's basically just setting yourself up for failure. So um, luckily I got a lot, of, uh, a lot of thought and a lot of appreciation for those two manufacturers that have decided to work with us because um, it's the only thing touching the ground. So uh, tell me about the brakes. Yeah, they're uh, StopTech uh, ST60Rs in the front, ST40s in the rear. Uh, and we actually work with them to develop a custom package for this car. It's not like an off the shelf deal. It is off the shelf parts that they kind of helped me pick out based on some of the feedback that I gave them when we first started developing the car, um, which was in 2018. Um, so nothing crazy, just caliper sizing. Uh, the 380 millimeter rotors, front and rear, uh, six piston front, four piston in the back. We've worked with some brake compounds. We've also flashed the uh, ABS to get a more consistent pedal because this car has always had a problem with kind of like a, you know, uh, strangely before, uh, performing pedal. We've got that nailed down. Really, I have a lot of confidence to stop this car uh, on Pike's Peak at 120 miles an hour. And, and uh, you know, I have full belief in those. So it's an important part of the car. Well, that's kind of one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is that even though you're going uphill, brakes 
it's such an issue with Pikes Peak, especially because uh, one of the things that a lot of people don't think about is that it's actually harder to cool the brakes. Everything, turn to cool everything. Yeah, because there's not as much air to remove the heat. Yeah. All right, so what about the splitter? That thing is unbelievable. Like, I feel like you could probably stand on that thing, huh? We could, I'm gonna do it right now and we'll see if we're gonna break it. I don't think so though, yep. Oh, no, we can't. We're good. <laughs> not bad. Okay. That's some faith in my own engineering right there. I could have ripped that off on camera and we would not have been able to cut that out. <laughs> so you actually built that yourself? Uh, no, uh, I had this guy actually locally to me in, uh, in New Jersey, uh, AJ Hartman, and uh, he's actually provided the wing, the diffuser, and the front splitter, and uh, the splitter is just off a cardboard template. So we just gave him a cardboard template, he made something that fit for us. Uh, we worked that in with like an off-the-shelf uh, lip from IND and just like kind of morphed the two together with some supports. And um, the, probably the coolest part about the aero package on this car though is that unlike a lot of people out there that build cars like this, we actually got to spend three hours in UNC Charlotte's uh, A2 wind tunnel. So we got this car in a NASCAR wind tunnel and had it up to 110 miles an hour. And we had an engineer there that helped us out and they got this car dialed in so that when we showed up to Pikes Peak, we didn't just have a bunch of slapped on wings and we didn't know what they were doing. Wow, okay. So, Let's check out the engine bay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so just looking at this from the outside, it looks pretty normal. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the cool thing about these BMWs. They're already so crazy from the factory, right? The motor itself is built now, but we ran all last year at 480 horsepower, completely stock. You know, we just decided to kind of up the game a little bit this year. I fully built the motor, uh, forged pistons, connecting rods, you name it. Yeah, so basically the cooling system has been completely reconfigured. Um, use a lot of off-the-shelf components and some custom stuff as well. Uh, it's basically just got an intake, turbocharger upgrade and uh, cooling system stuff. Uh, obviously the motor is fully forged, but it's not, it also is from the factory, but we, we kind of went the extra step in plans for next year, 2020, which we'd like to push 700 horsepower through this motor. Right now we're a little bit over 500 and 550 foot pounds of torque. It's got the factory ECU, it's been flash tuned, factory uh, dual clutch gearbox, seven speed. So tell me about the suspension. Yeah, suspension's JRZRS uh, Pro, two ways. Uh, it's got ground control hard parts on it, like adjustable camber plates and um, uh, all the spring perches and mounts and whatnot. Um, you know, that's been uh, an interesting thing to dial in because we had it pretty well set up in 2018. And then 2019, we added a uh, thousand pounds of downforce to the car and then we had to completely reconfigure the suspension. So um, that was one of the biggest things I fought with at the beginning of the year was getting it kind of redialed back in. Cause it's, now it's like driving with another half car on your roof and uh, the suspension doesn't really act the same. And, and last year we had just a wing on the back and a tiny little lip, so it was a whole nother ball game. Wow, so this cage is pretty uh, pretty insane, huh? Yeah, so we built this in our shop. Uh, my buddy Drew uh, used to be a fabricator for my shop. Um, we built this from scratch, obviously. Um, and honestly, the interior in this car is one of my favorite parts because I think it kind of showcases a blend of like race and like, you know, show. It's obviously we keep it super clean. We've got a bunch of carbon things like the center console, um, the foot box is carbon fiber. We had a custom steering wheel made with our logo on it. It's kind of interesting to kind of see the parts that you still left from the stock car. What's that key for? The key? Yeah. Oh, you still need the key to start. Really? Yeah. Still? Yeah, still. Because of the stock ECU. It, yeah, it's got the stock ECU, so it's still got uh, anti-theft. So uh, you have to leave the key in it. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, luckily that doesn't move because I'm pretty sure uh, if we left that behind, we'd be in trouble if we made it somewhere. I love these bumper stickers. This is cool because this is not a corporate race car. You can put whatever you want on it. <laughs> I know you really can. <laughs> All right. I like this a lot. The little rain light, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. You, unfortunately, you had to use it. Yes, I know. I've had to use it more times than I'd like to in this car, but I, I actually really do uh, like love driving in the rain, and it does help that this car still has full factory uh, traction control, which is pretty sweet. So, so do, wait, do you use traction control when you're in certain conditions? I mean, like it really depends on what the scenario is. At Pike's Peak, um, there's like three modes that the traction control has from the factory in this car. It's like fully limited in terms of you know being able to step out, wheel spin, things like that. I put it in the middle setting only because. Because like I think everything was stacked against me that day and I was like you know what that little extra cushion of safety just so that we could come back next year and that I was still alive to do that uh, I, I have no shame in my game I love turning the traction control off I'm sure we're gonna do that for you here in a little bit later but uh, but yeah no it's cool to still have that it's a nice little cushion for safety yeah so this was kind of a challenge we had to make a whole cage and uh, put a 15 gallon pyrotech fuel cell in there got a radium engineering uh, 450 fuel pump in that swirl pot there for starvation um, big old methanol injection tank. We run a big tank like that because we spray both in the motor and externally on the coolers in the front. We run like a spray bar, which is very common for Pike Speed cars. And that's again to help with dissipation of the heat and the cooling. So um, we did that and then 
Honestly, we changed over this whole wing setup last year and we had it mounted to the trunk, but because that trunk is composite, it was actually pulling the trunk apart. So we mounted it right to the unibody and then uh, my buddy Evan came in and we were able to reinforce oh, the mount. Really cool. This is all stitched into like the factory unibody here and we just made like support rods. So it's just really, it's just tied into the body, which is pretty cool. So, I really like that. Yeah, that yeah. is so cool. Yeah. So you're really putting down that downforce. Oh, then. definitely. Yeah. It goes right to the frame. Wow. Yeah. So uh, that is cool. Yeah. Thank you so much yeah, for bringing it. And Absolutely. thank you so much for pushing hard, nice. inspiring other people, hopefully to race up that mountain also and do time attack and all that good stuff because that's what this car is for, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, it started off as a club racing car, wheel to wheel, we still do some of that, but uh, once we kind of got it to where it's at now, I think it kind of exceeded a lot of rules in like a lot of other organizations and luckily we found a home for it in time attack and, uh, and hill climbs and whatnot and um, I think it's a good place for it. I think it's a cool place to be able to have a car that's kind of built in a show car way, even though it's a race car and uh, it's kind of a safer environment from it than getting you know your door kicked in by somebody uh, somebody who might not know what they're doing. So it's a, it's a good place uh, for this car to reside. Awesome. So uh, now you're gonna shred, right? Absolutely. This guy, I don't even have to scumbag him. He brought an extra set of tires just for this <laughs> because he knew he was coming to Speed Vegas. We're on their skid I knew pad. I was coming to shoot for you. That's a requirement, isn't it? Y yeah, you know, you'd be surprised. Some people are like, oh, you want me to do a burnout? I've never done that before. No, we're gonna How do you do that? <laughs> Awesome.